One, two, three. Come out. Come out. Amen. Uh, believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, many of us have a tendency to believe that once we are saved and we walk down the aisle and we give the preacher our hand and God our heart, that everything unclean has automatically come out. Well. Not so. Amen. I want to serve notice on you today that there's still some unclean stuff in all of us. Amen. 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 There is some, still some stuff that needs to come out. Yeah. Uh, so this message is not just for those who are hanging out in tombs and not just for those who are out in the, 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 the fringes of society. It's not just for those who are in bad shape, but it's also for us here in the church because there's still some stuff that need to come out. Yeah. Uh, I was at a, a banquet. I'm almost through here. I was at a banquet the other week, and I saw a lady that had a real beautiful dress on. Amen. And everybody was complimenting this lady on her beautiful dress. And while the, uh, the uh, people were serving uh, the drinks, now you know what happened. Some type of way, something got spilled on that lady's beautiful dress. But, but you know what, what, what was so interesting about it was she was not concerned. Help me, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. She was not so concerned about the, the dress uh, more than she was concerned with whether the stain was going to come out. Help me. Amen. Amen. And, and listen, let me tell you something. That's the way it is with sin. We don't need to be concerned so much about sin. What we need to be concerned is will the stain come out? Right. Amen. And I want to tell you something today that because Jesus went to Calvary one Friday, but he got up early Sunday morning, we don't have to worry about the stain of sin being on our lives because Jesus has the power to say, Come out. Come out. Amen. 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 Well, if we go to our text today, I want to take you back. We've got to see where we are in our text. So if we start out with chapter 1, Mark tells us that Jesus heals uh, Peter's mother-in-law who had a bad headache. Amen. And I just want, if I had a little time this morning, I want to preach about a little bit about having headaches. Because, see, sometimes you might have a headache in your life. It might not be a physical headache, but it might be some other kind of headache. You know, sometimes you have some situations that just a Come on, help me somebody, just a headache. You know what I mean? You tried everything that you know what to do to, to try to fix it, but you don't seem to be able to get anywhere with it. It's just a, a headache. And if you don't have a situation that's a headache, you got somebody that's a headache. Amen. They show up, you don't know where they came from, but they just a headache. And every time they come in your life, they got some problem that they want you to go and try to help them solve. And, and every time you see them coming, you know that they're coming with a headache. But I want you to know something, child of God, that Jesus is the one that can heal your headache. Help me today. If you need a checkup from the neck up, you need to go see Dr. Jesus because he can heal a headache. Hey, you got a migraine? I want you to go see Dr. Jesus. He can take care of your migraine. If you got some Somebody in your life, I, I, this is too loud. It was, God, if you got somebody in your life that has, is causing you a headache, I want you to know that Jesus can heal that headache. Yes, yeah, but then there's in chapter 2, the Bible said that uh, Jesus healed a man that was sick of the palsy. And he was sick of the palsy and he was stuck at his house. You know, see, he was a, a, a member of the sick and shut in. His name was on the program. And that man had been sick and shut in in his house for a long time. Yeah. Help me today. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Do I need yeah. to bring it down a little bit or bring it up some? All right then. Now listen, he was he was he was sick and shut in, but but his friends said we're not gonna let him be sick and shut out. I'm preaching, but y'all ain't saying amen. Because see, whenever somebody is sick and shut out, what we need to do is we don't need to sit in the pew and sit soaking sour. We need to go and get somebody and bring them to Jesus. And what this is what his friends did. They went by his house, and the Bible says it was four of them. We call them the quarter squad. And they went by his house, and one got in the two got in the front, and two got in the back, 
and they say uh, we're climbing up to Jesus. We're on our way to where Jesus is. And while they were on their way, I believe they started singing a song. And I believe they said they sung a song. They, I believe they said the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Somebody help me. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. But you know what happened when they got to the church house? The Bible said that there was a crowd all around the door. And they couldn't get him in through the door. And there was folk hanging out the window. So they couldn't get him in through the window. So they said, well, we can't go through the door. We can't go through the window. What are we going to do? Well, I think we're going to have to take him up. And you know, and back in the first century, the houses had ladders on the side of them. I want to say something. Little preacher right there. Make sure your ladder is on the right house. Amen. And make sure that your ladder is not on the wrong building because you might be climbing up to the top and find out when you get to the top that your ladder was on the wrong building but they had it on the right building why because Jesus was I'm preaching but y'all ain't saying amen because Jesus was in the house and when Jesus is in the house healing will take place when Jesus is in the house deliverance will take place when Jesus is in the house everything will be alright glory Hallelujah. But that was just chapter 2. We got to get to chapter 3. Because see, in chapter 3, the Bible said that Jesus healed a man with a withered hand. Y'all watch me because I'm going somewhere. Because I just came by to tell you one quick thing that you can win with a bad hand. Now I know somebody here today, you think that life has dealt you a bad hand. And you want to throw your cards in and go home and say it ain't worth it. There's nothing going to change my life. But I want you to know that with Jesus, you can win with a bad hand. Is there anybody here that know you had a bad hand in life? But Jesus came through and he changed that situation. He turned it around and now you can say, my bad hand is now a good hand. Glory. Glory to God. But, but we got to get to chapter 4. Because chapter 4 is probably one of the most well-known uh, uh, chapters in the Bible. Because you know that was about Jesus being out there on that stormy sea. Oh, anybody know anything about stormy sea? You know that life is going to have some stormy sea. But thank God that even though the, st the storm clouds roll in, that the sun is always shining. Because, see, Jesus had told his disciples to go out in a ship. And they went out there and they, a, a great storm came up. And the Bible said that Jesus was below, sleeping on a pillow. And somebody looking at me right now, and I'm looking at you, I don't know what your situation is, but you might feel like that Jesus does not care. But I want you to know that he does care. Yeah, does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and song? As the burdens grow and the cares distress and the way grows weary as long, does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear? Are the day's light fades into day night shade? Does he, Jesus, care enough to, keep, to care? I want you to know, oh yes, Jesus cares. If nobody else cares, I want you to know that Jesus cares. Did Jesus care when you lost the club one close? Oh, yes, Jesus cares. Does Jesus care when you've lost your job? Oh, yes, Jesus cares. Jesus cares. I know he cares. Amen. I know that he cares. But we're up to chapter 5. I'm almost through. And in chapter 5, the Bible says, and they came over to the other side. They came over to the other side because when they got out there in that ship and that ship started to sink, somebody went and woke up Jesus. And I tell you today that if you got a problem in your life and it looks like your ship is about to sink, you need to go get Jesus. You don't need to come to the pastor. The pastor can only pray for you. He can only help to pat you on the back. You need to go see Jesus. And, and somebody said, well, we don't need to. Well, Jesus must be. He's not here. He's asleep. Yeah, but I need to go wake Jesus up. Amen. Somebody needs to know that you can wake Jesus up in the morning. You can get him in the noonday, even in the midnight hour. You can call on Jesus. Anybody ever called on him in the midnight hour? Won't he come and see him? Amen. Yes. So they, they told Jesus.
Jesus about it. And you know the story. Jesus came up on the side of the ship. And the Bible said that Jesus said three words. Peace be still. And I'm glad that Jesus can make my peace be still. Because see, sometimes I got a whole lot of confusion in my life. And I just need peace to be still. Sometimes I got things that's going on and nothing can fix them. I just need my peace to be still. Anybody here today know what it feels like when your peace is still? That means that I got stuff going on all around me, but I ain't worried about it because I know my peace is still. My peace that's on the inside will change what's on the outside as long as I got some Listen, listen. 
listen, listen. In order for the stuff to come out so that you can come out, listen, you got to have a desire to let it go. Amen. 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 Now, you, you can fool me, you can Amen. fool the person sitting next to you, but some of us, the stuff that need to come out, we still want to hold on. Amen. 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 In case Amen. you say something I don't like, I can still cuss you out. Amen. 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 Oh, don't think I done forgot how to cuss for a Amen. The same thing that you used to do, you still can do it. Oh, yeah. and, and some of it, the reason why we ain't got rid of it is because we don't want to let it go. All right. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. But we got to let some of this stuff go. Right. The Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind. Right. And reaching for those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. So I want to encourage you today, child of God, whatever's holding you back, let it go. Whatever is holding you down, let it go. Whatever is holding you up, let it go. Whatever is standing in your way of a blessing, let it go. Whatever is standing in your way of doing what thus saith the Lord, let it go. If you got somebody, a relationship in your life that's not doing you any good, let it go. If you got a job that's not working out for you, let it go. If you got a problem in your life, let it go. If you got a habit that ain't doing it, it's good to you, but it ain't good for you. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. But this, and I'm through. I want you to know something. There's some stuff that needs to come out. But in order for the stuff that we've got on the inside of us to come out, the first thing, we, the one thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a desire to let it go. But then the good news of the gospel is that you don't have to do it by yourself. Amen. You know that this, this man fell down and worshiped Jesus. And whenever you submit yourself and, and worship the Lord, it's some stuff that he will help you to come out of your life. All you've got to do is say, Jesus, I surrender all. All to you, I surrender, Lord. I surrender my love. I surrender my heart. I surrender it all to you. When you surrender your life to him, some of the stuff that you know that is buried deep beneath levels of hurt and pain, years of disappointment, and years of struggle, years of bitterness. When you make it up in your mind to let Jesus help Some stuff can come out. Yes. You don't have to do it by yourself. Amen. He went to Calvary one Friday. Amen. So then you didn't have to do it by yourself. Amen. They put nails in his hands so that you wouldn't have to do it by yourself. Right, yeah. They put nails in his feet so that you wouldn't have to do it by yourself. Amen. They put him in a barber tomb so that you wouldn't have to do it yourself. Amen. He stayed in the grave for three days and night so that you wouldn't have to do it yourself. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand so that you wouldn't have to do it all by yourself. Is there anybody here that know that Jesus will help you to bring some things out? Is that something that you're willing to give to him today? Why don't fool me now? Is that something that you know that needs to come out? I want you to acknowledge that there's some stuff in me, Lord, that I need to let go of. There's some stuff that I can't hold on to because it does not please you. Glory to God. 